Hi and welcome back. Um, so in the in the past few videos, uh, we have started talking about integrals of complex functions. And uh, in this video, uh, let's sort of uh, quickly go through some of the rules uh, for integrating complex functions. And, uh, and essentially, the way we have defined the integral of a complex function is, uh, is, is sort of an analogy or is basically borrowed from the way we define the integral of a function of one real variable. Uh, so it's natural that many of the rules uh, are also sort of borrowed from uh, the rules of integration of uh, one real variable. Um, and they essentially follow from the properties of the Riemann sum. So the way we define uh, an integral as a limit of a Riemann sum, uh, these properties naturally follow from there. So let's just quickly list these properties out. Um, so one of the properties, the first property is that let's say we integrate, we are integrating a complex function, wz dz over some contour uh, C. Um, then uh, let's say we multiply this with a complex constant K, uh, which is inside the integral. Then uh, essentially, we can take this complex constant outside the integral and write this integr integral as K times WZ dz. And, and again, this uh, simply follows from the way uh, the integral is defined as a Riemann sum. So if you multiply, um, uh, if, you, if you multiply the value of wz with the same, with, with, with the constant or the same value at every point in, 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 in the complex plane, then essentially the overall sum gets multiplied by that complex constant k. Um, so a second property uh, again follows from the linearity of the Riemann sum. So if we have two functions, uh, let's say w1z plus w2z, which we are integrating along the same contour c, then uh, the integral of their sum is equal to the integral of each of them, is equal to the sum of their integrals. So times w2z dc. Um, so a third property um, is sort of expressed in the following way. Uh, let's say we integrate a function along a contour c, wc along a path or a contour c, wc dz. Um, then this integral um, is equal to minus of the integral if we integrate along a contour which goes in the other direction. In other words, um, let's say we have uh, some path c and we are integrating in this direction. Then the integral that we obtained by integrating the function wz along this direction is equal to minus of the integral that we get if we integrate along this direction. So if the arrow is made this way, then the, the, then the integral that we get is the negative of the integral uh, that we get if we if we move in in, in, in the sense of the in, in the in the sense uh, that we have drawn along the first path. So these two are negatives of each other, um, and and we can think of this as sort of uh, an idea which is similar to the one that we come come across when we integrate functions of one real variable. So um, so if we are integrating a function from a to b, let's say f x d x then this is nothing but minus of the integral from b to a fx dx. So this idea is somewhat similar to that. Um, another idea, which, is, uh, which we label as the fourth rule, is that if you are integrating along, let's say, uh, two, two contours which are joined together, um, let's just call them c1 plus c2, Let's say we are integrating functions from c1 to c2, wz dz is equal to the integral over c1, wz dz, plus the integral over c2, wz dz. Uh, so in other words, uh, let's say we have some contour c1, which looks like this, and then another contour uh, which goes like this, which we call c2, and we are integrating the function uh, f along this entire path from C1 to C2, then the integral is equal to the integral over this path plus the integral over this path. So the overall integral can be broken down into the sum of integrals across both of these paths separately. Uh, so these essentially are uh, four main rules um, of integration and um, they sort of are extensions of the ones that we've already encountered when we talk about uh, integrals of functions of one real variable. However, um, let's just keep these in mind and think of uh, one very important idea 
which we started talking about when we when we uh, in, in the introductory video to uh, when uh, in, the, in, in the introductory video to the uh, integration of uh, functions of complex variable and that idea is uh, that of uh, what are the conditions uh, under which Uh, the integral of a complex function is independent of the path that we take or the contour that we uh, integrate along. What are the conditions under which uh, complex integral is path independent? And, um, and let's just look at this idea uh, from the point of view of the rules that we've just talked about. So let's say we have two points in the complex plane, uh, Z1 and Z2. And imagine we have two paths. Let's, let's just call this a path um, C1. And then there's another path that goes like this, which we call C2. Now, if the integral is path independent, uh, it means that, the and let's say we are integrating a function wz, it means that the integral of wz dz over c1 is equal to the integral of wz dz over c2. And both, we are integrating between z1 and z2. So from z1 and z2 along c2, and um, so from z1 to z2 along the path, I just write the path um, here along C2, sorry, along C1, and this is along C2. So we are, we are calculating the integral of the complex function wz between the points z1 and z2. Um, now, as we talked about in the introductory video, there are infinitely many paths that we could take from z1 to z2. And so one of the things that we want to discover is are there conditions under which the integral is independent of the path that we choose? And the reason why this is important is because if the integral, if there are such conditions under which the integral is independent of the path, um, that means that we can define something like the antiderivative of a complex function. Uh, and this essentially would be analogous to what is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, so, 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 so in order to sort of understand what are the conditions under which an integral could be independent of the path, let's just see in terms of the rules that we've just figured out, how to cast, recast this problem in, in a way that's, uh, that, that we can sort of, which, which is somewhat more neater and, and it sort of ties in with the discussion that we've been having in some of the previous videos. Um, so, so essentially, if the integral is independent of the path, it means that the integral along C1 will be equal to the integral along C2. So I just remove the endpoints just make just so that so that the notation is not clumsy um, but it's understood that we are integrating from z1 to z2 so if this is equal to this then um, let me just write it here again so c1 wz dz equals c2 wz dz and i'll just draw the parts here so z1 z2 Say this is the first path C1, and this is the second path C2. Okay. If you bring this on the other side, this expression can be written as wz dz minus the integral over C2, wz dz is zero. Um, now, if you recall rule three uh, that we just talked about, minus of C2 and integral of minus of C2 can be written as C1 wz dz plus an integral over minus C2, uh, wz dz, and we want this to be equal to 0. And now if you recall rule 4, uh, we, we essentially have two paths, and we are taking the, the sum of the integrals along both the paths. So we should be able to combine these two together. So uh, the combination of these two, a combination of these two, can be written as the integral c1 minus c2 wz dz is 0. So if the integral along both these paths is the same, if the integral between z1 and z2 is independent of the path, uh, it means that the integral 
over the contour which goes from C1 and then back along C2 this entire integral is 0 and this entire integral is nothing but an integral along a closed contour and if you recall the discussion that we've been having so far we've been focusing a little bit on the vector calculus results that come when we talk about the, the flux and the work done and all those when we are considering a closed loop in, 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 in a two-dimensional plane. And, and one of the reasons we have been talking and started, we started talking about closed loops is because of this extremely important uh, feature, uh, which is that if the integral of a complex function wz dz from between, let's say, point z1 and z2 is to be shown to be independent of the path, one of the ways of doing that is to show that an integral along a closed loop uh, that, that, for instance, goes from C1 and back across C2 back to the point Z1, so from Z1 to Z2 and then back to Z1, if this closed loop integral is 0, uh, then we can show that the integ integral is indeed independent of the path. Um, so in the next part of the videos, uh, let's sort of, so we pretty much have all the ingredients to find out what these conditions are. So in the next video, let's start, uh, let's start exploring this idea further and uh, hopefully that will be of some use. So um, thanks for watching and see you soon.